All right, guys, I'm Rabia. And I'm Matt. And this is Sound Like on Anderton's TV. <laughs> Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Rabia. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm actually really up for this one. This is going to be a good one. Um, so we're going to be trying to sound like Incubus again, this time by busting the bank. I mean, we don't really say much more other than both of us are massive Incubus fans, have been for a long time. And we did a... It was one of my favourite ever sounds that we've done. It was, and we realised this morning that it was actually October 2015, which is nearly three years ago, so it's ages ago. Let's have some tonal recall right about now. So, should we go and find some gear? Yeah. Sweet. Right, so we're in, uh, in the room of PRS. Which is, again, what one of the main guitars Mike Einzinger used for years was PRS. Obviously now he plays Music Man and he's played Fenders and all sorts of stuff. But PRS is the one that you mo I think about most of the time when he plays. Yeah, well we used an SE last time, didn't mm -hmm. we? In fact, we used... Uh, this one. This is what we used last time. There you go, 799. So this is like a semi-hollow kind of uh, SE version, 799. I think it was slightly more affordable, but that's probably inflation. Uh, it did a great job, really enjoyed it, but interestingly enough... We have found <laughs> this. That is pretty much exactly what you need to sound like my kind of zoom. And this, let me get it in the light here, it's absolutely beautiful. It, oh, double check, 10 check, top. Check out the flames. So this is a horribly expensive guitar, probably around 5,000 pounds. I think five and a half. Um, and if anybody is a fan of Incubus, which I'm sure you are, in the Morning View era, he almost exclusively used a, a hollow body PRS with piezo pickups. So, I mean, that is exactly what this is. Yeah, so it's got the, an output for kind of your regular pickups and then a piezo also. Oh. Um, it's very, very nice. I think, we, well, we found the guitar, let's find an amp. Let's do it. So, we're onto amplifiers. We are. He's used, again, all sorts of stuff, but I think it's kind of unavoidable to not do the era that I personally love. And I think, Matt, you actually know you're more like I, crow left, I, light I, grenades. Crow on left, them, yeah, crow yeah. left and light grenades are my crow left. Amazing mm, album. It is. Megalomaniac, that was the first time I really heard them. Yeah. That's and that, great video. to be fair, is when he stopped using PRS, he started using Jaguars and Plexis. But right. the, the albums before, it was the PRS Hollybody and Mesa uh, Rectiverbs. But we're going to try and get tones for all the kind of, we're all, try. all the tunes from one rig. Yeah. And so, Mesa Boogie. Yes. The, specifically, the Rectiverb. Yes. Um, we have stumbled across this, which is the, a 112. It's a 112 combo, the Rectiverb 25, which is a 25 watt tube amplifier from Mesa. About 1500 quid, so it busts the bank. I mean, there's no way we'll find an amp closer to teamed up with that guitar to, yeah. to do Incubus because he used Cream Rectiverb 212s and two 212 extension cabs. So the, he had two amps, two cabs, and um, that was his rig. Um, the color probably doesn't affect the tone, so I think this black one's cool. Okay, so <laughs> we have our amp and guitar yes. currently clocking in around 7,000 pounds. This may be the biggest buster of the bank we've it ever is. done. It all depends on how much we can blow on pedals. Mm, pedals. Which is the next subject. And it's also one of the biggest areas, most crucial parts of Mike's rig. He's a big pedal user. Yeah. Um, we, we found that it was a lot of boss, 
Um, Have you ever seen his pedal board? Well, it's, well yes, yeah, ginormous. It's made up of three parts. Is it the one that kind of goes yeah, it's like an sandals, arc, yeah. yeah, around him? Yeah. Um, so we can either go get single effects units for every single effect that he uses, maybe even the ones he does use, or we can multi-effects it like we did last time with maybe a Mobius again. See, the argument is that when you write, when you're a guy like Mike Hansinger writing your riffs and songs, you need the options. Yeah. Because you're because we're doing very specific parts of songs that might use a bit of delay, a bit of chorus. Yeah. That it's almost like, yeah, we could get a hundred pedals. Get all the pedals, but, but really, it's almost like option paralysis. Yeah, and the Mobius absolutely killed it last time. Well, we could get a Mobius and maybe a timeline. Well, Strymon is still the most expensive of that realm. Yeah, but I mean, I Man don't Fee think the tone is as good as well. Yeah, but I mean, they, I mean, they are what five hundred quid plus. But if you bought like you know high end effects for each effect, you're still talking you know a couple yeah. hundred quid a pedal. And I mean, the Rectiverb by nature of its name, I'm hoping has reverb in it because I don't think he's a mega yes. mega reverb user. So we don't need like a big sky. No. But I reckon yeah, timeline maybe Mobius. Um, what else does he use? He uses like phasers, but they got them. We might might be worth getting an external phaser to mix with the phaser in the Mobius to do like yes. the warmth. Yeah, yeah. But he's does, it, does the Mobius have like a, a double phase thing? No, obviously it just generates one phaser. Okay, you're like, okay fine. So, so we got our guitar. We've yes. got our amp. Mm -hmm. um, we have Strymon timeline for delays. My bass and Strymon loving their gear. And what have you got there? Uh, this, this is the Mobius, which we used last time. It, this will handle pretty much 90% of all of our weird sounds from every record. All the excerpt. weird sounds. And we know he likes his delays. Yep, so we're thinking with this couple of pedals, the guitar and the amp, we be should be good to go. And because it's by busting, we're just going to throw in a couple of extra little bits just to help make things easier. Because last time we had constraints, this time we're going to throw It's more like a just in case. Yeah. You know. So um, let's go and see how it sounds. Let's do it! in the video room. Yes, we are. It didn't say anything. <laughs> Normally, it gives I've us some out. sort of I've like analogy. Out. I've run out of words. Yeah. But we're trying to sound like Mike Einzinger, uh, oh. Incubus, by busting the bank. I am really, really happy with the outcome. It's, I think this is, we were saying before, this is probably the closest gear mm. to, to, actually, the to the artist that we could have actually got hold, hold of. So, yeah. I mean, definitely in terms of guitar and amp. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And some of the pedals, arguably, but... But the guitar and amp gives us obviously a great basis to, uh, to hit up some of his tones. Yeah, and, and, you know, we always hope that when we do, you know, without busting, then we do a by busting, that it's, it's better. And sometimes we stand there scratching our chins going, not sure if it is better than the original yeah. that we did. For me, as far as I'm concerned, this one just wipes the floor with the without busting rig. <laughs> So close. 
It's really good and it's such a great set. It's kind of like, it's a really, really clean, rich sound yeah. that you get from the Messer and the, the PRS. But go on, let's, let's have a look at the guitar. So, this is a PRS and this is the Custom 22, but it's a hollow body. It's like fully hollow body. It's a it's 10 top front, 10 top back. We were told actually earlier that the, the back part of it, everything aside from the top, is made from one piece of flame maple. Yeah, they, ca they carve out the whole yeah. guitar and what they need from the innards of the guitar before from the bass. Then they add the sides, then they add the top. Um, so Andertons do do these guitars. They're on a special order situation because obviously they're quite dear. They're about £5,000 or more. So if you want to get a hollow body PRS, you have to sort of order it for Andertons through PRS. Yeah, but that's totally possible. So we'll stick a link in the description. Yeah of how, that's, how that works. But this was very kindly lent to us today by one of Anderton's team, uh, Paul, and he, he said, you know, if you're going to do Incubus by Busting, you need to use my this guitar. This is the guitar. So, and he wasn't wrong. Um, it's perfect. In fact, Mike Anzinger had the bigger one. It was a slightly more vintage looking one. Didn't have a flame top, but it was a little bit thicker. <laughs> Just to mention, we had this in the PRS room earlier, and it, this is considerably thicker than like a regular Custom 24. Mm. Um, obviously, the bevel on the back and the front yeah. and the thicker body. It's, but it's yeah. super beautiful and really light. Yeah, it is really light. And apparently, um, some of Morning View was recorded on one of these as well, mm. uh, so I was told. But that's the guitar, horribly expensive. And it has, it's worth saying, I think we said in store, but it's got the piezo yeah. in the bridge and obviously the regular humbuckers switchable mm. with this here. Yeah. And two outputs, so. Yeah, so you have like volume tone, volume for piezo, and then you've got two outputs on the side. You can either have a blend with one jack or you can do stereo and then have a blend, control the two, or just exclusively piezo. So, moving on to the amplifier. Mike Heinzinger famously used Rectiverbs. He used the cream colored 212 combo versions with a couple of extension cabs. This is the 112 version, but it's the same amp and I mean, even in a 112 little box combo, mm. it's getting us the tones, like circles. Oh, yeah. So close. It's, it's two channel, but you've got like a clean, a push clean, and then you've got a vintage and a mo modern setting on the overdrive with reverb on the back. And it's the 25, so you can switch to 10 watts or have 25 watts on there. And it packs a little punch. It really does. They're about 1,500 pounds. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, great, great sounds. Yeah, and it's yeah, it is. It sounds fantastic, especially for the incubus tones. Like literally, going onto uh, the modern overdrive, uh, EQ is roughly around halfway. But then all I did was go neck pickup, played the circles riff, and it was like, oh well, that's it. sound like straight in it sounds like incubus no I'll just show you now okay. I never remember which one's which there we go <clears throat> so this is how it sounds straight in so this is <clears throat> the neck pickup <laughs> so if I do like a It's, Sounds <clears throat> awesome. It does. Really I'm not sure the strings are on here, but it was hard to play a lead on. In any case, it's got the sound. Mm. Like, it really, really, really does. So, mega chuffed with that. Um, but then, to be fair, it doesn't stop 
it gets better. It does. And then we've got quite an expensive pedal board down here. Mm -hmm. um, we have starting with the Timeline by Strymon, mm -hmm. which is the delay pedal that's in the loop. Mm -hmm. Um, we then have the Mobius, the modulation pedal by Strymon also, mm -hmm. which is getting us all of the weird sounds mm -hmm. uh, that he's famous for. Um, yep. Then the Boss is the PS, uh, PH3. Yeah. He uses the PH2, I'm mm -hmm. told. Um, and that is for... Well, we song? use that on the warmth because we know that that is the exact... Well, it's... just two phase, yeah. basically. It's the modern version of the PH2, but it's essentially the same circuit. So, like... In terms of you want to get the mic handling a phaser sound, you have to use a Boss PH yeah. two or three. So that's why we added that because of course there's phaser in Mobius, really yeah. good phaser. But if you want the mic handling a phaser, you need to use a Boss. Okay, and then the and G then the G7. seven because he has that on his board too. Did you use it much? I did. I actually used it quite a lot. I used it to brighten up some of the overdrives, right. uh, and I also used it for Are You In because it really, really pulled out some of the harmonics that we played. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Generally speaking, it's a meg. We've used it many a time. Oh, it's, it's yeah, reliable. Yeah, um, and all in all, you just get this really wonderful sound. So I guess since we are playing on the clean channel, and then if I show you really quickly how we did the warmth, so I use a standard digital delay on the timeline, set the timing, so it's a bit like that kind of speed. I boost a little bit of re uh, reverb on the back of the amp, like that. And then I put on the PH3, uh, but the rate's nearly on full. The depth is about 10 o'clock. Uh, the resonance is down at about 9 o'clock. And then we're running it on a four-stage phaser to get, essentially, the warmth, which is this. I mean, we're all shaking our heads in the room because it's like, it's uncanny. It's, yeah, it's very, very close, I think. Yeah. So hopefully that comes across to you guys. Yeah. Um, other than that, I suppose we, I mean, I've messed around with the phaser sound, but it was sort of maybe something like this um, to do. Which it's just the swells. So that, that's are you in, you know, it's just, it's a really nice feeling when you just do a little bit of twiddling, then you play the part you, you know that you learned when you were younger and you go, oh wow, that's, that's actually it. the sound. That's the one, yeah. Um, and Matt was playing bass for yes, some of the songs. I was using this Fender P bass here um, into our trusty Fender Rumble, that's the 100 behind me. Um, I guess that's going to simulate more what Ben Kenny uses nowadays because he's all Lachlan bass, isn't he? Yes, but I do have to say, like, he's an exceptional bass player. Mm. Um, so I hope I've done, done a good job. Well, yeah, um, and to be fair, <clears throat> Dirk Lance being the dude with the Warwicks, and you can really hear that's a Fender bass, but it kind of still pulled it off. You yeah, know? yeah. And I guess lastly, really, really quickly, using for the glass um, excerpt, it was Quadrator on the Mobius. And the shift is nearly on full. 
Uh, and then basically I made it so that there was no oscillation. So it's just one straight sound of that effect. And then you literally just play. Um, I think this definitely stacks up to a by busting. We were debating whether this is the most expensive rig we've we've concocted so far, with about five and a half for the guitar, about one Two and a half nearly. for the for the amp. That's seven already, and then these are a good five hundred each. So that's eight. Eight and a, <coughs> you know, we get on the way to eight and eight and a half grand. So it does does stack up, but it does sound great in fairness to the PRS and the Mesa combo. Yeah, I mean. Compared to our £1,500 budget, which I think we just overshot on the first one. Yeah, that was a, well, we had a Mobius, I mean, yeah. and that's a chunk of it gone already. And it did get close, but this is like, in at times when we're recording, uncanny. So, I mean, eight grand worth it? Not sure. But if you've got disposable income and you really like Incubus and this rig, then you're onto a winner. There anyway. you go. So all the links to all the gear is in the description box below, as per the usual. Please let us know if you think this was better than the without busting version. Love to know what you think. And also, if there's anyone you'd like us to sound like, let us know in the comments below. And last but not least, I've been Rabir. And I've been Matt. And this has been Sound Like on Anderton's TV. Yep. See you later. We're back in the video room. We're back! <laughs> <laughs> We're back! We're back! <laughs> in the video room! Yeah! In the video room! <laughs> 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 what that? <laughs> Everyone should do that. It feels great. It really does. It's a posture. It's like this. <laughs> It's like he's chundering up in his lap, just like. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's there. Oh, I'm, I'm crying. Good stuff. <laughs> Struggling. Oh man, that kicked off. Oh mate, and we're back in the video room. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.